A code of ethics and a possible new microbrewery in Durango top the latest City Council meeting. Welcome to Council Connection. I'm Sweetie Marbury, Mayor and Durango City Councilor. This City Span 10 program is designed to give you a snapshot of happenings at the most recent City Council meeting. In this program, we look at the September 2nd meeting. We began with a proclamation declaring September as Hydrocephalus Awareness Month. Hydrocephalus is the buildup of excess fluid on the brain, a condition which impacts one of every 500 children and an estimated 40,000 American soldiers returning each year with traumatic brain injury. Christina Brown of Durango accepted the proclamation for herself and her son Jaden, who has hydrocephalus. And we hope that everyone in Durango, Colorado, certainly becomes more aware of the challenges with hydrocephalus. Hi, Jaden. Hi. Hi. Would you like to say something to the audience? Um, a good we boy. just are very um, thankful, and Jaden is the reason that we're here and that I wrote this proclamation. Yes. <laughs> and um, we just hope to really continue raising awareness for something that affects um, a lot more kids than um, we know. So thank the council and the city, and say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. One of the first items is the consent agenda which is intended to allow the City Council by a single motion to approve matters that are considered routine or non-controversial. There is usually no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or a citizen requests an item be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. There were 10 items on the consent agenda, including adoption of City Council goals for the next year, which Councilor White removed for further discussion. Ask this to be removed from the consent agenda because I think it is worth uh, highlighting the background from the staff report for the benefit of the public here and on, on television because I think the, uh, a, a lot of work has gone into the framing of the goals over the last two years and it is uh, one of the things, one of the reasons we're coming to this tonight is that we're about to launch into discussion of the city budget, which is framed around the council goals as articulated here. And I think it's important for citizens to know and understand where we're coming from and where the city manager is coming from in framing the budget uh, to uh, get your arms around a very large expenditure of public funds. The document looks like this. There are four major goals. Under each goal, there are three objectives and then the staff have action steps for each objective. The first goal is to promote community sustainability through fiscal, organizational, and environmental resiliency. And what's important there is sustainability frequently equates to only the environmental aspects, but if we're not fiscally sustainable, uh, we won't be able to provide services that we have come to enjoy. Um, goal number two, foster civic engagement and democracy by encouraging citizen and youth participation, open and transparent government, and regional leadership. Um, goal number three is uh, demonstrate government performance through efficient, effective, and innovative city operations. And the fourth and final goal is envision Durango's sense of place by creating character districts, promoting responsible land use planning, and maintaining the community's sense of identity. These goals are important. They communicate a vision to the community, provide direction to city staff, and are a key part of preparing the annual budget. In council reports and actions, I noted that work is underway on the pedestrian safety and connectivity improvements around Brookside Park and 24th Street. The project is being done in two phases and should be complete in late November. I also reported Durango hosted the Colorado Association of Ski Towns and myself, City Manager Ron LeBlanc and Amber Blake presented a PowerPoint on the council goals that directed projects for the staff, such as single stream recycling, working with our neighbors, the Southern Ute and Ute Mountain tribes, involvement of the youth on boards and the Mayor's Youth Advisory Commission, and many more. 30 ski towns came to Durango and loved our town. 
There was one legislative public hearing on the agenda to consider a code of conduct and ethics to clearly define acceptable conduct for city officials and employees. Mary Beth Miles, an assistant to the city manager, spearheaded development of the code and presented it to council. On those examples, the real key policy provisions um, include the, the policy establishes an independent board of ethics that's comprised of five at-large community members who are appointed by city council. Of these five members, at least three members um, must be city residents. This is one of the items we talked about at the study session. Uh, the policy also empowers the Board of Ethics to issue advisory opinions to city officials um, who want to seek guidance about ethical issues relevant to their service. It also clarifies the actions that are allowed and those that constitute a breach of public trust, specifically relating to the use of public office for private gain, gifts, conflict of interest, and other ethical matters that are not consistent with existing policies or the city charter. Councillor Dick White compiled nine procedural items and changes for the new code. They will be incorporated into an ordinance adopting the code, which is likely to be introduced at the September 16 council meeting. The one quasi-judicial hearing on the agenda dealt with an appeal of a planning commission denial of a parking variance for the Animus Brewing Company. Scott Bickert, wants to locate the new business in the building at East 2nd Avenue and 15th Street, which was formerly occupied by For the Birds. The restaurant has seven parking spaces, enough for 21 seats in the restaurant. Bickert would like 30 seats without having to add the required three more parking spaces on the rather confined site. The main question really, and the reason why this variance is so important, Mr. Bickert, is really having to do with the viability of his business. And what he's, he's looking to do is he, 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 wants, he needs to have his business be viable before he opens up the doors. And seating for 30 patrons is much more viable than seating for 21. And so when you're crunching the numbers, as uh, Councilor Brandt was talking about, that, that's, important. that's important from the business perspective. Concerns about the business, its operating hours, noise, and the sort have also been expressed by neighbors, including those in the adjacent day house development. After a lengthy discussion, counselors voted 5-0 to zero to grant Bickert's appeal with numerous conditions designed to address the neighbors' concerns as well. Counselors mentioned several events you might find interesting. Virtual City Hall is online. City residents can participate from their homes by providing input on issues pertaining to the city. Downtown parking will be free from 4 to 6 p.m. on the first Thursday of each month. That's to accommodate the first Thursday gallery walks, making it easier for everyone to meet your friends, enjoy the arts, great dining, and be a tourist in Durango. Councillor Dick White noted that the Smiley Building will screen the film The Switch Energy Project on September the 18th at 5.30 p.m., he will participate in a panel after the screening. Councillor Christina Renderly noted the Chamber is hosting a community forum for County Commissioner candidates at 11.30 a.m. September 9 at the Doubletree. I'd like to remind all of you to attend the Kiwanis Club of Durango's 59th Annual Pancake Day, September 18th, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the La Plata County Fairgrounds. I'll be there and hope you will too. And that's Council Connection for the September 2nd Durango City Council meeting. I'm City Councilor and Mayor Sweetie Marbury. Thanks for joining us. And remember, you can always contact your city councilors via email at citycouncil at durangogov.org.